Good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, Blog Podcast Studio is in the building. Host Montana, woo woo. Co host, Co-host host Vernon here. Tyus. They just cut me off. <laughs> yeah, that's my part. I was saying, all right, anyway, good afternoon. Business entrepreneurs, entrepreneur land, entrepreneurship. We are back Wednesday, 12 noon. So, getting into uh, some announcements. We got classes starting this Sunday from, um, what's our classes starting? 10 to 1 is a business class. So, if you're trying to get your business up and rolling, your nonprofit business, your for profit business structured and developed correctly instead of copying off your friends. Um, give us a call, 216-815-7300, Fly Incorporated. We also have grant writing class this week. So if you guys are interested in writing your grants, your own grants, um, getting some funding for your businesses, that class starts this Sunday at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So give me a call. The classes are almost full for that class, um, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and then they're going to continue from... Monday through Friday, except for Wednesdays, 6 to 9. So Tuesday, thir- wait, so Tuesday, I don't even know how to count. Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, and Friday, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 6 to 9. You do not want to miss Monday and Tuesday because Thursday they will be processing their grants for funding. January people have already got funding for their grants and for their businesses. Um, February people still waiting on um, replies back and see if they process their grants. And March class starts on Sunday. Um, we have CCW classes on Sunday from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So if you're interested in getting your CCW license, give us a call, 216-815-7300. All right. All the announcements. Yeah, yeah. So okay. uh, give us uh, a little bit of how this class ended. What do you think about this last class? This class, everybody in here was tripping. I don't know what was going on. No, I'm playing. But this class was wonderful. Um, we had a graduation that was off the chain. Um, the class that just ended, um, they were focused. They stayed motivated. They finished everything that um, pretty much we asked them to do. Um, we have some people that are still trying to figure things out. So guess what? If you're still trying to figure things out from the past classes, what they do is they call us and say, hey, put us back in those classes as a refresher. So guess what? That means you can come back to any course, any class for free for a whole year. So I think we do five to six classes a year. Once you take that first class, if you want to come to any additional classes, it's free. So you have to attend the first one, and then the next ones are the next classes are free. So if you're doing a business class, your next business classes are free. If you're doing a real estate class, you pay for the real estate, and then your next real estate classes for refreshers are free. If you're doing a grant class and you take you pay for the grant class, you want to take additional grant classes, that's free. So you can come to all these grant classes and get funding. So the grant class should be like what well, overpack, right? So we got a couple of people that started in January. They missed a day or two. They're coming back to this grant class to finish up their process. So, I mean, if you want to come to the grant class, just let me know. Um, but pretty much um, the people that came out of this class, they were phenomenal. Um, they focused on what they had to do. Um, got a couple of ladies. They have uh, veteran homes. They needed tweaking. They needed some information on how to run that nonprofit because some of them had their um, veteran homes in a for-profit, switching over to a nonprofit. So they got the information they needed. The one-on-ones were awesome. Um, we have some awesome BAs out there. So my shout-outs to the BAs, for Tina, Terry, um, Shahira, and Kim. So my shout-outs to you from Blot Incorporated. Um, continue um, working with us. Continue the success. So mm-hmm. so uh, for the future Blot members that's, that's getting ready to come aboard, i I like to tell you one thing is that this is a, a process and a program that you really have to come in and, and just dive in and just be committed to it. And you have to trust the process. Yes. Um, we have designed this process for people that are that skill for people that are no that know nothing about an LLC, S corporation, nonprofit to all the way to accommodate the ones who do understand. So those of you that are calling me. And I'm getting a lot of phone calls in the last couple of weeks to, hey, just tell me how to register for the, the LLC or S Corporation and how to get me my EIN number over the phone. No, 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 no. We are out of line. We can't do that. Okay. Uh, that's like telling the doctor or Googling your diagnosis for your hand swelling up. 
you know, that can be anything between some trauma to your hand all the way to some kidney situations. So we don't want to do that. So just come to the class and immerse yourself into the process. That way we can help you out. Trust me, if you, you just stay with the process, you will be good. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, we have also designed it to where scalable to deal with people that are already have businesses in place. So I have some members coming in that's going to sign up for this class now that have been saying that, you know what, Bird, we don't need this. You know, we already got to the point where we are generating a million, a million two in revenue. Uh, but here's the thing. You don't know what's proper, what's improper until it's tested. So in the minute that you think everything is good because you got money coming in and then somebody tests your structure, then that's when you find out that, you know what, I should have did something different. And by that time, it's going to take a lot more work to restructure that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, who's who's Bird? Who's that? Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> All right. So anyway, Miss Tyus. So pretty much, we came out on Tuesday, Economic Tuesdays. Whoop whoop. So what we're doing on Tuesdays is we are doing what? We're going out to support the black businesses out in our community. Yes. See, that gives us the opportunity to draw traffic to an individual or, in, or or several businesses in one day. We can't hit all businesses in one day. So what me and my tenant is doing, we are going out mm-hmm. along with some efforts of the Omega Psi Five Fraternity Incorporated, and we're going to scout businesses on Friday. And on Friday, between Friday and Saturday, we're going to choose what businesses that we're going to visit and yes. showcase them. Yes. Now, with the efforts of the brothers, um, they are going to have what we call a um, uh, uh, a biz push, which one of those businesses, they're going to say all the brothers from the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated should show up and, 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 and support this business yes. by buying the goods and drawing more people there. And we will be videotaping. Block KAZ Radio Studios will be videotaping. All right, yes. we already had one yesterday, right? We had one yesterday. Yeah, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was yesterday. We're going to be airing that um, soon this week. Um, we went out to uh, was it mine, ours, and yours? I hope I said it right. Um, for the lay, a phenomenal um, woman that started her business way yonder, and she is doing um, some fabulous things in the community. Um, she has a passion for the community. She has a heart for the community. And pretty much we're going to be hearing that soon once we edit and, and cut some stuff. <laughs> yep. So, you know, the, the streets are big out here in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. So if we miss you and you just want to call and, and make a recommendation, you can call 216-815-7300. Right. Uh, if you want to make a request for us to come to your business, your workshop, it doesn't matter if you're a restaurant, clothing store thrift store, whatever it is that you have to offer to the community, give us a call and we'll be there. Yes. Um, Also, I forgot to mention, we have a real estate class um, here at Bly. If you're interested in the real estate part of the um, program, give us a call for that. Our real estate classes start on Wednesdays from 6 to 9. So if you're interested in real estate, let us know. Tell them a little bit about real estate, what we do. Okay. The real estate is (laughs) our opportunity to uh, exploit one asset class that I think is very, very important to an entrepreneur or a person, uh, period. Just owning this asset gives you exponential growth. It's part of that that segment that we teach in here that gives you quantum wealth. So in this class, we're going to teach buy and hold, okay? We're going to teach flipping. We're going to teach wholesale. And our poster child, which is the nonprofit situation, how to acquire real estate inside the nonprofit that, mm. that is – Connected to all the other resources a nonprofit will receive, like grants, uh, sponsorships, sponsorships, all of that stuff. Yeah. All right. So we need to know how to position this real estate, how to do rent rolls, how to do uh, real estate evaluations when you're doing a flip or a wholesale deal. Mm, that's that's awesome. All right. So if you want to be part of this up and coming real estate workshop, uh, it's not going to be like a class like we have. It's going to be a little bit more truncated. I would like to call it a workshop now. You need to call 216-815-7300. Again, that's 216-815-7300. All right, what else we got? What we got before we go to our guests? 
You tell me. We got the radio <laughs> show. What you talking about? What? <laughs> we got the radio we show. We got the radio show. Okay, so if you want to come on our radio show, advertise your business, come to the business classes, um, start your own podcast show. Um, we have like three studios here. Give us a call at the same um, number. Our address is 503 East 200 Street. 503 East 200 Street. We're located in Euclid, Ohio. Um, if you want to take a look at what we have, if you want to run classes in here, just come and take a look. Just come to our address. Give us a call. Make sure we know you come in, of course, so we can be here. And then you can just, you know, take a look at what we have here. Um, well, it's not just the look. training. <laughs> oh, um, go ahead. It's go not ahead. just the look, all right? It's the professionals behind the look, all right? Um, a lot of times, I mean, we got 600 members here, and everybody is always talking about how do we get our businesses out here. We're in the new times now. All right. You can't get up and just go canvas the street and knock on doors anymore. People are not that comfortable just coming through your workshop. Mm -hmm. So the best way to get your business out right now is a podcast station. All right. right. Come in here, learn how to put one together. We have a professional here that's going to teach you how to do it. All right. He's also if you don't want to learn how to do it and you just want someone to do it for you. Maybe he could put together a program for you and get your numbers up. People that's in the music industry people that are doing internet sales, people who need that certain exposure where you want to uh, put your tax business out there, finance business out there, and all that type of stuff. Right. Come on in. Call 216-815-7300. All right. So the benefit, what's the benefit of someone having their podcast station here rather than, you know, in their garage at home or in the basement, you know, in the attic or in their bedroom? What's cool. the benefit? Well, I can think of a whole bunch of benefits. I can think of One a whole is, bunch of benefits. As soon as you walk through this door, you're going to walk past about uh, 10 other businesses and prospects that's going to need your business. Right. And second, you're in the community of uh, 600 other businesses. Um, and and the other thing is, like I said before, you got this professional and you got this nice little facility where you yeah. ain't got to pay a whole lot of money <laughs> to do what you need to do. And then you make a whole lot of money to do what you need to do. All right. So people that's doing their podcast, I'm not knocking that you be doing the podcast at home or things like that. But if you are um, want to network with your community, you want to network with other business entrepreneurs, um, this is the place to be. You will meet a whole bunch of people that have businesses that can follow your um, your page, your network, your podcast. Um, you have a, a following, a greater following. Um, it, it's hard work to try to get your um podcast stations up and editing and tweaking and things like that, which you have somebody to do that. All you have to do is sit, bring your guests on, whatever you're trying to do, and then let the engineer take over from there. So it's a stress-free environment. All right. So we have a special guest today. We have a guest named Sean Austin. Um, he has taken the um, real estate class. He has taken the business training class, and he's getting ready to take the grant writing class as of this week. He has done phenomenal things in the community. He has youth programs structured up and running. He works um, directly with the community. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, his things that he's trying to do and what he's trying to do and how he got started and how did he hear about Blocked. All right. So get off the phone. So, <laughs> <laughs> so good afternoon, Sean. Good, good afternoon, afternoon, Montana. Good afternoon, Vernon. Good afternoon, Larry. Good afternoon to you all. all Thanks right. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. We're glad to have you on the show. Oh, you got it? <laughs> okay, good. All right, so ask some questions. Oh, what, first of all, what do you want to tell us um, or tell the community? What I would like to tell the community is is that um, my experience at Blot is an excellent experience. There's quite a few things that I've learned. I do have a nonprofit that I've been running for approximately 10 years, uh, seriously for about three years. Um, and I thought I knew a lot, but uh, coming to Block for seven weeks, I've learned a lot more. Um, and I realize it's not just a seven-week program. You know, um, I do have a one-year, you know, membership that's going to expand to more than just one year, particularly um, because of the information that um, and the relationships and the gaps that have been bridged here at Block. Um, so I would like to tell the community that if you are serious about, you know, making an impact, if you're passionate about something, um, and you want to go after it, uh, I believe Blot is that place to help you fuel that passion um, and bridge those gaps. So, um, Because I've thought a lot more outside of the box as it relates to uh, what I've been doing. Um, so 
I would like to, you know, just express that. The blot is the place to come to All right. for those things. Very good, man. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this. Since weeks before the class started, you you has been just motivational to have like a like a I don't want to say student, but a member that be sitting in the crowd that I can pass the ball to every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Um, and and to have somebody like that on my heels, is, it kind of like pushes my game up too yeah. to try to make sure that everybody get what they need. Got you. Um, so that makes me ask these questions right here when I when when you ask me, okay, Vern, what are we gonna talk about on the show? So mm-hmm. these are things I want to know. What was it? What is the motivation behind you and your business? I mean, what what really made you just thrive mm-hmm. to to get this business going and come to Blot and try to improve it and take it to the next level? Yeah, I uh, thanks for asking. That's a good question. I um years ago I was talking with my uncle, you know, and um, I was uh, really on my journey, a Christian walk, and. Uh, I was coaching football and I was conflicted because I was coaching football games on Saturdays and Sundays. And um, my uncle was like, don't look at it from the perspective that you're not doing God's work still. He said, look at it from the perspective that, uh, you know, you know, everybody's not a pew Christian. Everybody's not a, you know, a pew worshiper, whoever they worship. He was like, they need people in the, in the inner city. They need people in the rec centers. They need people on the basketball courts, on the football fields. He was like, so, Look at this from the perspective of this your ministry. If God's calling you to do it, he's like, do it and do it well. So he kind of released me. So I've been on a quest ever since then. Like, okay, I'm out here. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to be that, you know, be that tool, so to speak, for God's glory. Be that uh, that conduit. So um, my passion fueled because uh, uh, for several reasons because of that. But then I moved my family out of the inner city of Cleveland to uh, – the Broadview Heights Brexfield area to take advantage of structure. And I had, I told my wife it's a business trip because I felt like um, I was there to learn some things, learn structure and then take that structure back into the inner city um, and then provide structure and provide opportunities and bridge a gap. So what I saw was, is, is that that's cool. I could learn the structure, but it had to be a little bit more intentional. Um, I think, um, that getting around people who had the same path or walked the same journey that you've walked helps you to understand that the run and the intensity and the intention is a little different. So coming to Blot, I saw people that that had my same upbringing, you know, um, that had a passion and a fuel to and a desire to make a difference, to make an impact. And I felt like that was what my journey led me to Blot. My sister actually told me about Blot, um, my sister Faye. She has a, uh, a a home daycare business, and she's phenomenal at what she does. And she kept telling me, hey, you need to get out there. You need to get out there. You need to meet Montana. You need to meet Vern. She's like, you need to sit across the table from them because you got ideas, you know, and it's things that I think that they can help you with. So that um, and then the impact that you all made on my sister uh, got me here. Um, and, I, and I seen exactly what she was stating, what she talked about. It, brought, it kind of brought things full circle, so to speak. Good. Thank you, Faye. <laughs> thank you for the kind gesture, and thank you for, for the, this blessing right here that you just sent to our class. Thanks, Faye. All right, here's, here's the next question. I, I know you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't touch on it, mm-hmm. uh, but tell us specifically, who do your business serve, how, and how do you get to them? Got you. Uh, my business serves what the general population will call at-risk youth. Um, but I remove the at risk, you know, um, because I just think it's a, it boxes us in. It's good to get, you know, funding when you use terms like that and things of that nature. But I think it's a mentality. I think you almost plant a, a negative seed in our kids' minds. So we service, it's non gender specific um, young ladies, young men, ages six through 18. Um, and where we're expanding to is we're beginning to serve collegiate athletes as well put a flat a platform in place, give them an opportunity to come work out, get video footage, video documentation, things of that nature. Um, but we currently service um, ages 6 to 18. We offer sports, um, competitive sports for ages 6 to 14. So we have football and cheer currently. Um, we, have, um, we also have basketball as well for ages 6 to 14. We want to expand the track and field and soccer. 
um, ages 14, uh, 15 through 18, which is the high school uh, athletes, student athletes, we uh, service them by way of training. We do social emotional development training. We do character training. And we have um, non-gender specific mentoring programs, but we also have gender specific because we want, um, we have uh, young, two young ladies that have within our nonprofit, they have their own mentoring program as well. So we um, we have mentoring program in line for, for all the student athletes as well. They have to clock in for every to uh, every hour of training that they do, they have to clock in 20 minutes of uh, character training, social emotional development training as well. Um, and that's called a social, social emotional development health component as well because we couple the um, skills and agility training with that. Oh, good. That's good. Very good. Wow. I'm tell you that's guys a lot of information. <laughs> um, who do you work with as far as getting that? Because it sounds like a lot of things you guys are doing yeah. as far as working with kids. So, um you have a team. Do you work with other entrepreneurs? Um, mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about how does that work? Because I know you ain't doing all that by yourself. No, I <laughs> I, I read a book by John Maxwell called uh, Five Levels of Leadership, and it taught me something. Like, um, you know, I don't want to be a positional leader. Like somebody who has a position, mm-hmm. people have to give you permission to lead them. So that's the first step to you know being that five level leader. So what I do is I um I do in my mind I look at you know, when you go to an average work facility or, or organization or business, typically um, it's a pyramid, you know what I'm saying? And that, and that one person that's the CEO is at the top, you know, in my opinion, I inverse that. Like, I'll be at the bottom and I'll build up. And as I build up, I'll build wider, you know. So right. I try to be people who have entrepreneurial spirits um, that are wanting something or, or they have a gift, but they don't necessarily know how to use it. We talk, we sit, and we talk, and we exercise their gift. I have somebody that's good with structure. Um, let's exercise your gift. You know, they organize our, our rosters. They organize our sign-ins. And with COVID, we have to be a little tighter, so we have to tempt people in. They have to have masks. Right. We have to have uh, individual water for hydration. So we had to get even – it made us better, actually, and it made me lean on leaders more. Um, and from that perspective, um, I just – I always try to build a team with their concept in mind. Like, what is it that you want for yourself? And how can you use this platform to get what you want, to be that individual you want? And so what I've, what I've done is, is like, um, I've gotten grants from, you know, great organizations like Neighborhood Up, um, MyCom. I partner with West Park MyCom. Um, there's another, um, they were our fiscal agent before we got our 501c3. They were uh, Bel Air Peerless Development Center. Okay. Um, they gave us opportunities to get smaller grants to where I can come in and leverage, you know, and create opportunities for people that had skills, you know. And what I would do was is we, we would provide a service for their child, you know, and because they saw the benefit of not having to pay two or three hundred dollars for their child to get this, we would do 10 week programs um, and their child would be in a 10 week program. They would pay nothing, but they saw the value of the, the grant funds, giving it, helping their child with a skill set, whether right. it be, you know, be tutoring. We do tutoring as well, whether it be tutoring, whether it be skills training, whether it be the mentoring or the character or social emotional development portion. They saw the value in just locking arms, bringing their skill set to the table and help grow on the platform so that we can just reach more kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how we, uh, you know, that's basically how I develop leaders is just trying to have an impact, you know, um, and not just impacting our children's lives, but impacting our families' lives. So that, you know, because the, the kids could track the mud back home, mm-hmm. but if the parents come by and keep sweeping it up, you know, cleaning it up and not wanting to really hear what the kid is experiencing, then it never really sticks. It's like it's a vicious cycle. We have to kind of, ring out what the kid's been exposed to at home, you know, and then try to instill it and then they try to carry it back. And then, you know, depending on what their situation is at home, they might have five or six siblings and mom or dad or mom and we or grandma may not have time to really sit down and let this kid, you know, saturate the home with what, they, what they're full of when they leave us. So what we try to do is just try to impact the whole family so that everybody, like our in our character trainings, our parents and our grandparents are sitting in the character training. And we're giving them uh, character cues to use at home. Like, so if we use a word called initiative, that's our 
our our character work cues are six words over six weeks. It's impact, mission minded, poise, attentive, courage, and trust. So we send the kids home and the, and the parents home with a little bit of homework to exercise and use certain trigger words that'll trigger their initiative. And then our coaches use their own trigger words that'll trigger their initiative on the football field. So it's about just creating that cycle of health, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, throughout the throughout the household. And then that way we'll have that. That's how that will helps us develop the total athlete by having that full push. Yeah, hey. that yeah. creates a certain discipline right yes, there. Yes, it does subliminally too. Yeah, because you just Im- yeah. embedding it right there in, in their brain. True, true. You know, uh, mm-hmm. and make them think about it yep. while they putting it. In, that's while they applying it. Yeah, that's Very good. True. That's good. So, what are your five year goals? Five year goals is first. I would like to expand and get a facility because. COVID taught me a few things. COVID taught me that uh, you can be limited if you let yourself get limited. Like, we were doing creative things. We were, we got, we are home filled with John Marshall High School. We had to transition from John Marshall High School because they got shut down with COVID. Uh, CMSD was shut down. And then um, we, had, we're, we were using their weight room. We were using their auxiliary gym. And we were also using their main gym for different things. So with that being said, um, You know, with that being said, um, we just had to really get creative. So um, what it taught me was I have to get a facility. I have to get a facility that houses kids for, like, student athletes. So if they don't have after-school programming um, or if something like COVID hits again or if COVID doesn't allow them to have after-school programming moving forward for a few years, um, I would still have a place to have kids come in and still run the programming still run the um, athletic programming, the mentoring programming, the tutoring programming, um, and just want to expand more services. Uh, we would like to add track. We would like to add uh, uh, soccer, uh, track and field and soccer, um, things of that nature. Um, would like to also expand our services to teach the kids entrepreneurship, um, also teach them, um, if they're not, don't have the mentality to be an entrepreneur right away, teach them, you know, employable skills, things of that nature. So that's kind of where we want to expand our five-year goal. And then just to maybe expand outside of predominantly the West Park area, expand more east, you know, know, broaden things up. We do service kids in the greater Cleveland area from Tremont, Ohio City, all the way up to close to the Berea. We butt up against the Berea area. but And we have kids that come to us from different sides of town. We would like to expand, you know, out to where we have facilities. over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you spoke with uh, Ivan a little bit, and and that's one other thing I'm impressed about mm-hmm. you, man. When you came in here, you wind up doing the, um, and we we running short. But I just want to commend you on gotcha. this. When you came into Blot, we uh, you you went right after me and Montana picking mm-hmm. up Ray. Mm-hmm. Went right after Marvin, another facilitator, mm-hmm. and then right after Ivan, which is the facilitator of the Grant situation. Yeah, right? yeah. So I, I commend you on that, man. I wish you all the, all the wealth that's coming up out of that si- that situation. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. Hey, that's right. You know. That's right. <laughs> so that's that's our guest. Why don't you give people the address where they can find you at, yeah. phone number, and all of that stuff? Yeah. Um. Our our website. The best place to find us is our website at impactyouthinc.org. Um. My name is Sean Austin. Our our organization is uh, Impact Youth Incorporated. Uh, my phone number is 216-387-0187. And once again, my name is Sean Austin. Um, feel free to even email us at impactyouth.inc at gmail.com as well. Um, but if you want to get a, a good look at what we do, who we service, where we service, and who our partners are, um, all the information is on our webpage. Once again, that's at www.impactyouthinc.org. Wow, so that's Sean Austin, uh, one one of our uh, elite members in in the class. Um, and then we we running short, so we're gonna have to make some more major announcements, okay. and then we have to go, go. <laughs> All right, so our time is uh, almost was up. It's up. Okay, so um, tune in next Wednesday at noon. Blot Incorporated building business leaders of tomorrow. Today, I'm your host Montana. Woo, woo. And the co-host, Vernon Tyus. And if you need us, you know where to get us. That's 216-815-7300. Or next week, Wednesday at 12 o'clock on the KZ Block Radio Show. Right. Excellent.